Good evening, everyone. Thank you. This room is probably the most difficult room. I mean, I am visually impaired. I can't see any of you, but it really does feel like a very big space. So what I need to do is to have as much of you bring all the energy into this room so I can feel you. Um, so we are coming to the end of our first day. And we, I think one of the things for all of us who are hanging around outside is the level of conversation that is very characteristic of the Zero Conference. All the conversations beginning, all of the energies, the friendships reconnecting. And I keep encouraging every single one of us to reach out to somebody that we don't know or haven't met and have a conversation and plot and plan. So this evening, every year we have a sort of like a, not an exhibition, but sort of a collaborative sharing of what's happening. And last year we had the tech show. This year, we have our extraordinary exhibitor space just outside here in M1. Now, we want to ensure that every single one of you gets to meet the exhibitors, rather than just walking by and coming into a session. We want to give everybody the chance to know who is exhibiting. So what we're going to do this evening is we're going to give each of our 24 exhibitors a chance to tell you where they are, what they're doing, and to make an invitation for you to come and visit them. Now, 24 is quite a lot, so we are going to make sure that our exhibitors only speak for 90 seconds. Yes, that's quite hard, 90 seconds. And I will be very vigilant in making sure that that 90 seconds is kept. Agnes will be here by my side. We will be timing it on an iPhone. And if anybody goes beyond 90 seconds, we will physically remove them from the stage. So we will ensure that you will get your dinner. Now, however, before that, I, speaking of food, reached into our bag just before lunch to show you a muesli bar. Has anybody eaten the muesli bar? Hello? Sound, please? So I would like to introduce you to the gentleman who put the muesli bars in your bag, because he didn't just put the muesli bar in your bag to help stave off the hunger, but it was for a point. So, Mr. Muesli, where are you? Here he is, Mr. Moosley. Could we give Mr. Moosley a round of applause? Okay, firstly, thank you so much for the Moosley bars. But could you also explain why there was a Moosley bar in each of our bags and why you felt it was important to do that at a conference about disability inclusion? Oh, thank you. Well, we strongly believe in the strength and uh, talents of all people, basically. Uh, and the Muesli Bars are a result of an art competition which we kind of organized last year. Um, we asked artists with disabilities from all over Austria to submit something and we got over 200 submissions. Um, there was a jury voting after that, then a public voting, and in the end um, there were five winners. Uh, and this, these five designs of the winners, they are now on the packaging of the Muesli Bars. Um, so this is kind of a, a way for us, one of our projects, to kind of show the talents which are out there, which are often hidden. Uh, we want to make them visible. Well, firstly, thank you. Yes. <laughs> See, it was more than just a tasty muesli bar. So this was last year's competition to design packaging. Yeah. Do you have a competition for this year or another year? Yes. So we hope that there will be many more competitions. Um, and we are still looking for partners for the upcoming years. Um, but for this year, there's already a competition planned. It's not fully official yet, but it will be kind of big. So it will not be muesli bars this time, but it will be kind of uh, a painting uh, of, of lorries, so of uh, transport vehicles, which will kind of drive around all Austria and will maybe even have more visibility than the muesli bars. Okay, so what kind of partners might you need to help make this competition a reality? Who are you looking for to help you make that competition? What do you need? Here's your audience. What are you looking for? Well, we always, we're looking for, for a, a venue, basically. So after each competition, there's a huge, well, all the winners get certificates. And we, last year, we did a huge show uh, displaying different kinds of art. 
So there's a venue which is still uh, open. We're also looking for sponsors, of course. Um, um, media partners, which help us kind of with the communication and help us ensure that everyone uh, in Austria or beyond kind of knows about the competition. So these kind of partners. And if we yeah. don't have uh, venues or money or sponsorship, what can every single one of us do to support the competition next year? Well, there will be places in the jury again, of course. Um, there's also a big uh, voluntary team uh, helping us. So we have Five Fesh based in Vienna, but we have uh, over 15 volunteers kind of helping in different kinds of things. Um, we have a website where you can also look up different projects that we are doing right now. Um, can so you give us the name of the website? Uh, yes, so it's, uh, it's an Austrian name, Five Fesh actually translated means uh, really handsome. So it oh. would be. Uh, Is this after you? Pardon? No, no, no. Uh, I'm visually oh, impaired, so that doesn't mean anything, but go ahead. No, no. Uh, it, the, the, our first project was fashion. So, also the t shirt I'm wearing right now. So, we, we took art of uh, artists with disabilities and put it on fashion. Very so this cool. is how the name came into being. Um, so, the, the website is uh, www.voifesch.com. Um, mm -hmm. um, I will also stay here a bit longer, so if anyone wants to talk to me, I'm happy to kind of engage with you. Yeah. A big, big round of applause for Harold. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, some food and we have some fashion and we know that Harold is very handsome. Um, to bring up another very handsome uh, partner in crime, where is Martin the Magnificent? Martin, hello. <laughs> so Martin is my um, Bonnie and Clyde for this evening. Um, as I said, we're going to be having a quick fire round of our 24 exhibitors. Martin has been in charge of creating the exhibition space. Um, do you want to just briefly talk us through, before we have our keynote speech, what we're going to be doing after our keynote speech? I think we're going to have lots of fun. Fun, okay. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that. So, first of all, thanks for all the exhibitors who prepared their cool booth. And now it's time to give them the stage and really pitch their booth. So they get 90 seconds and you already said you're going to be the bad cop. I am. Are you the good cop? Uh, uh, maybe then. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, and they can present the booth, tell you what you can find there. And as I already said before, it's, yeah, the conference is about listening and talking. The exhibition is about communicating and experiencing. And this is the chance of the exhibitors really to attract your interest to go down there. And I think it's already, they, have, uh, they should get a big applause for making uh, the Zero Conference also a practical place where you can experience what is out there to uh, make a world without barriers. Thank you, Martin. Magnificent. So now, before we go into our quick fire round, as I set my phone alarm for 90 seconds, exhibitors, get ready, practice your 90 seconds. And as we give you a little time, I am delighted to bring onto the stage James Thurston for our first keynote speech. A very warm round of applause, please. James. Oops. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. What an exciting first day of the conference. Thank you, Michael and Martin and the team for, for putting this together. It's been amazing. Um, I'm James Thurston. I'm with an organization called G3ICT, which uh, many of you probably know and, and may have worked with. And we are an international nonprofit organization set up specifically to focus on the technology aspects of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the digital inclusion of, of people with disabilities around the world. And we've been doing that for, I think, uh, a little bit over 12 years now. What I want to talk with you today about, though, is uh, cities and the roles that, that cities can and should be playing in supporting independent living and political processes and political participation of people with disabilities around the world. And uh, I think we're, we're seeing some interesting trends around the, the digital transformation of cities that have really uh, inspired G3ICT and our partners to start focusing on cities as potentially the real uh, most important platform potentially to, to ensure the inclusion of people with disabilities. And, and I'll talk a little bit about why that is uh, in a minute. 
I think if you, uh, how many people here live in a city? I live in the city of Washington, D.C. How many people here live in a city? A lot. Um, so, uh, uh, and even if it's a small city or a big city, cities do an, an amazing range of services that are important to all of us. They, they support education, they support employment, they're hubs for, for entertainment and commerce. Cities provide really sophisticated and, and sometimes quite complex transportation networks that allow us to, to get around from school to work, uh, into social activities. They, cities provide for public safety, uh, in emergency preparedness and response. Cities uh, oftentimes are administering courts and justice systems uh, that are important to, to us all. And they also, uh, cities are often playing a role in elections. In, in political processes. So they're, uh, they're probably, in terms of, of our day-to-day -day lives, the most immediate uh, form of government uh, in, in coming together that we participate in. A colleague of mine uh, who actually works with, with Jenny Leigh Fleury at, at Microsoft, she, she often says that cities are, are where we all live, work, and play. It's where we live our lives day-to-day. -day. And so from that perspective, how inclusive they are uh, and how they're using technology to be inclusive is critically important. And, and that's what I want to talk with you about today. So at G3ICT, we, we, um, we take several steps to, to understand what's going on in terms of digital inclusion and, and the use of accessible technology around the world. Um, we often do global surveys and analysis, and, and there are a couple points that I want to share with you today uh, about what we're hearing. Uh, and, I, and I think generally pretty good that there's some real optimism about the use of technology in cities uh, and, and the use of technology in general and how it can play a real positive role in supporting uh, the, the inclusion of people with disabilities around the world. So a couple years ago, we did a, a survey of more than 400 smart city experts around the world. This first data point came from that survey, which said that what we heard was that 94% of these experts around the world, experts on smart cities, said that accessible technology, accessible ICTs, would actually help with inclusion in, in, the, in the city, in the community, um, for people with disabilities, if the technology is accessible. And in particular, the, these experts pointed to uh, help in terms of transportation, employment, and healthcare. Those were the top three areas where they felt that if cities were deploying technologies that were accessible, uh, it would have an enor enormous impact on the day-to-day -day lives of people with disabilities. Last year, we partnered with IDA, the International Disability Alliance, to do a survey specifically on access to justice, which has been uh, one of the real, I think, pain points of, of implementing the UNCRPD in Art Article 13. People with disabilities generally fare not well in any country around the world when it comes to access to justice. In fact, uh, we partnered with IDA to, to survey their members, and 85% of disability organizations around the world reported a, a severe inequal access to justice for people with disabilities in their country. 89% uh, in the global south. But we also heard from them what I, what I even I was a bit surprised by is some real optimism about the role of technology. So specific to access to justice, one of the things that we heard from these disabled persons organizations around the world is that 89% of them thought that technology could help to improve access to justice, and an even higher number in the global south. 93% of disabled persons organizations uh, in the global south felt like there was a role for technology to improve the situation on access to justice. But everything's not, uh, not necessarily that positive right now, and I want to share with you some of the global trends that we're looking at that really inspired us to get involved in focusing one of our programs on smart cities and how cities, big and small, global north, global south, are using technology. So we, we all, are, I think, are, are very familiar with the fact that about 15% of the global population uh, is a person with a disability, about a billion people worldwide, and, and that's important. But I think even more important than that is uh, the outcomes of people with disabilities around the world in different countries, in different cities. So we know, for example, that people with disabilities are far less likely to start school, start an education. They're also far less likely to complete an education. They're far more likely to be unemployed, far more likely to, to live in poverty. They're less likely to be part of the financial services network and, and the banking system in their country. Uh, and they're less likely to participate in political processes. Those are not great outcomes. Uh, and interestingly, cities play a role in just about all of those outcomes and can play a positive role uh, if they're mindful and think about uh, how they're approaching the services that they provide related to all of these outcomes. The, 
One of the other trends that we saw that really inspired us to start focusing on cities uh, is, is that technology is advancing into every aspect of our life. We're using technology from the moment we wake up until the moment we go to sleep, and many of us are using technology after, even while we're sleeping. Um, and some of these data points, I think, are, are really give a sense of the, the scale and, and, and the, how rapidly technology is moving into our lives. And, and there are clear implications for people with disabilities as well. So there's about 5 billion smartphone users around the world today. 70% of youth today are online. We're raising our first generation of digital natives. Uh, people who will be using technology from, not from birth necessarily, but soon after birth probably, uh, for all of their life. Uh, and these are people who are, who are very fluent in the use of technology and have an expectation that they will be using technology and that technology will work for them. There are about 50 billion uh, IoT, Internet of Things devices uh, uh, around the world today. Not just PCs and smartphones anymore, it's your bicycle, your scooter, your refrigerator, your microwave, your home. Uh, just about everything is connected now to the Internet with huge implications, uh, I think, for society in general and for people with disabilities. We also know beyond this, uh, the, these data points about how rapidly technology is advancing in our lives that people with disabilities, it, it's not rapidly advancing into the lives of people with disabilities at the same rate. People with disabilities are far less likely to be connected to have broadband connectivity. They're far less likely to, to have access to a smartphone or a computer. Uh, if they do have access, they're far less likely to have the, the level of digital skills to actually let them benefit from those, that technology. So the, this, uh, the, the technology is not impacting people at the same rate. We know that the world's rapidly urbanizing. 50% of the population lives in cities today. That'll go to 70% by 2025. Uh, a data point that I heard recently in, uh, is that in China, the demand to live in cities is so great that they would have to build a new city of a million people every week to keep up with that demand. Uh, and in some regions of the world, this urbanization trend is, is happening even more rapidly. 10 of the fastest growing cities in the world are in Africa, uh, so we need to have a, a focus there. And we also know that people with disabilities uh, live in urban centers even at a, at a higher rate than the rest of the population. Smart cities, and the, one of the reasons we focus on, on smart cities is they're, they're really defining how we as human beings interact with technology and with each other by the enormous amount of deployment of technology in cities, big and small. So the, the market for technology with cities is about $2 trillion a year. So it's an enormous amount of digital transformation in cities. But we know that, that this current trend towards digital transformation in cities, this current trend towards smart cities, is not benefiting everyone. Uh, in the first year of our Smart Cities for All initiative, we, we did this global survey of, of um, experts. We did roundtables in cities around the world. And we found that 44% of experts around the world, only 44%, knew of a smart city that actually was having a focus on ICT accessibility, on digital inclusion. Just 18% of these experts knew of a smart city that was using accessibility standards uh, as part of their smart city program. And 60% of the experts said outright that today smart cities are failing people with disabilities. We also know that the innovation process uh, is, is not helping. It's actually making the situation worse. There are great urban innovation ecosystems, incubators and accelerators that are coming up with new and, and exciting technologies and products and solutions every day. Uh, but typically, uh, those are not accessible. Uh, so we're, we're sort of uh, making things worse by these exciting innovations which are not thinking about universal design and accessibility. So one of the things that we did at Smart Cities for All and at G3ICT to address this is to, to build a toolkit, uh, which you can find on our website, smartcitiesforall.org. And we've started developing a set of tools to really help cities think about how they're buying and deploying technology and making sure that, that that technology absolutely works for all of their citizens, including people with disabilities and older citizens. Because as we all age, we pick up some, some age-related impairment that affects how we use technology. I would invite you to, to check out the, the toolkit. It's available in 10 languages today. We've just started piloting the newest tool, which is an assessment tool, where we work with cities around the world on understanding how their technology deployments, how their smart programs are either helping or hurting the digital inclusion of their citizens. So uh, here's a, our website for the smartcitiesforall.org toolkit and, and some of our data and, and the work that we're doing around the world. 
Um, I would invite you all to check that out, but also think about the city where you're living and the extent to which it's buying of technology, it's deploying of technology, it's focus on being a smart city, is, is it also focusing on being an inclusive city? Uh, and encourage you to, to partner with us and others to help them make that journey from being not just smarter, but also more inclusive. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll end and thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, oh, I'm on. Thank you, James, and thank you for keeping to the time. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. Um, James, you're going to be around for the full uh, conference, aren't you? To yes, absolutely. So, James is here, and it's open for all conversation. So, once again, thank you. Now, Martin the Magnificent, where are you? Here you are. Okay. Here we go, people. Uh, we're going to see how good our timed clock is. So, I am going to. We're going to ask our. I'm going to look after the ones, and you're going to look after the twos, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take. One from each side of the room of our exhibitors in our hot fire round for 90 seconds. So um, I'm going to switch on the 90 second count and I can see somebody running across. So can I please have up from team one, uh, Access Israel, come up here now. And I am now going to press, da, 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 go. This is the most pressured time in the conference. My name is Michal Rimon and I am a zero project addict. For the past four years, we've been coming to Vienna, trying to add some spice to an already amazing conference. We believe that talking accessibility and inclusion is very important, but it's not enough. We all have to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. And I'm going to invite you to experience, to get to know the people behind the disability in this year's amazing trail located right here to the left of me, to the right of you, outside of M1. This year we're focusing on accessible elections and you'll be able to really experience. Have anybody been approached in the past in the afternoon saying, hello, good afternoon, which disability do you wanna choose today? Because that's what you're gonna get out there. Try, experience, talk, share, that's what it's all about. And I'm on time oh my God. for the first time. <laughs> This was actually 30 seconds less from Access Israel. Over to you, Martin. Okay, one, two, three, go. Hello, my name is uh, Luis Marroyo from Fundacio Campus Arno de Scala. I'm very happy to be in Cerro conference and uh, especially to present one of our tools we have developed is the medical consultation is a tool to fight against stigma. The tool is addressed to the uh, health, uh, health staff and uh, health healthcare staff, uh, doctors, uh, nursing staff, social workers, uh, all, all the people related with uh, patients. Well, uh, we have uh, developed some scenarios with the most common stigmatizing um, behaviors. And uh, then we show the doctors and the, the other staff the impact uh, that the behavior produces in the passion. Okay, the most common uh, behavior, in order to talking about discriminatory behavior, is avoidance of uh, when they are attending a person with a disability. So they try to go fast with the visit. And another is attribution, or, or everything is happening to the person with their disability for the disability. For the disability. So uh, we try to uh, show the impact. So you are invited to experience on um, all the, <laughs> all, I'm sorry, booth number six. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, so from my other fabulous family, Ashoka, you have 90 seconds. One, two, three, go. Hello, good evening. My name is Loïc Van Kutsem from Ashoka. We're a global nonprofit supporting over 3,700 social entrepreneurs around the world, people like Carol and Casey and others in this room. And we partner with the Zero Project since two years on a program called Impact Transfer. Each year we support, during six months, 
10, 11 innovations among you to clarify how they can scale their innovation with partners. So they've been working very hard over the last six months to clarify how they can offer their proven solution to others, how you can collaborate. And this is the opportunity for you in the booth right outside this room to meet these 11 innovations from 10 countries and discover how you can benefit from those and potentially replicate them in your local context or how you can support them. So if you're interested in best practices, scaling what works rather than reinventing the wheel, having more impact with limited resources and the power of collaboration, don't miss this booth, Impact Transfer, right outside the room. Thank you. Woohoo! with 30 seconds to spare. Over to you, Martin. Next one is, next one is uh, Nita Vindish from Mom's Belief. Okay, one, two, three, go. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nitin Vinlish. I'm founder and CEO of Mons Belief, a social enterprise. Uh, we empower parent, especially caregiver and mother, to become a co-therapist for their child. We take care of autism, ADHD, Down syndrome, intellectual disability, cerebral palsy, and, uh, and anything to do with mental health disorder. We assign a dedicated child psychologist to every mother who works with a team of occupational therapists, speech, special educator, art therapist, child psychiatrist, and provide a comprehensive tailor-made plan, which you see above, to, to be imparted by those parents. We work with center and schools so that they can provide a quality service to do kid because they struggle at times in the intervention for the right time. Our booth number is 23. Uh, it's on the ground floor. Please drop by, would love to take you through the process. They are wonderful kids, tailor-made for the kids or special need. We'll take you through the entire process, how we create that, how we impart that. And lastly, tomorrow we are celebrating Day of Belief. It is to thank you for those parents, especially that mother, who believe that she can change the, child, change the life of their child and, and do something by herself. So please, please, please do celebrate Day of Belief tomorrow. Uh, please join me and my team in thanking those parents who make, can make a difference for their child. Thank you. Perfect timing. Thank you so much. You. Remember, Day of Belief tomorrow. We will open up with that, so thank you. Now I would like to invite to the stage Speech Code. Where is Speech Code? Hello, how are you? Okay, we ready? Come to the yes. Speech code. I am with my colleague here. Uh, hello. Ready? One, two, three, go. Hello, my name is Barbara and this is my colleague Richard from SpeechCode. SpeechCode is a mobile technology to provide information access in more than one sensory channel. In other words, in print and in audio. We do that with the code. You have here a very big box uh, to better see it. Um, it is scanned with a free app offline, which means all the content is in the code itself and then the information is provided to read and to listen. And Richard will show you live how it works. Move right, move right, turn right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm standing wrong way. Move closer. Yeah, super, let's backwards. Turn on the light. Move closer. Sorry. Altadol Forte. Product name. Voltadol Forte. Description, gel. Manufacturer, GSK Chevro. Volume, 100 grams. Expiration date, April 1st, 2020. Right. And so on. So you now know everything about Voltadol, but it could also be on any other kind of document and information you want to provide in an accessible format. Thank you. Thank you. And I think to get a better example is to go and visit your booth, right? right. Okay, over to you, Martin the Magnificent. Okay, next one is Neatbox from, uh, uh, from UK. Okay. One, two, three, go. Hi there, uh, my name is Gavin Neat from Neatbox. I normally do 90 minute presentations, so I'm going to use VoiceOver to help me with this one. VoiceOver on. Notes. Note. Text field. Is it eating? We are not born with a need to discriminate. We learn this discrimination later in life. Neither are we born understanding how to avoid discrimination. We must learn skills to ensure that we have empathy for others. 
At this time 75% of disabled people have been discriminated against when traveling or shopping. Ensuring that customer service teams are trained to engage with every person has always been challenging but this is now possible using our award-winning welcome system. We geofence buildings and provide customer service teams with information about a person and provide them with top tips on interaction five minutes before a person walks through their door. This system empowers both the visitor no matter of what their needs are but also empowers customer service teams to be the very best human they can be. This system is now available in the UK and the Republic of Ireland but in we hope that by 2020 it will be increasingly available in the rest of the world. Come and see it in action on the first floor at the neat box stand. Okay, I have some spare time so here is a joke. How can you tell if your friend has a new iPhone? Oh. Come and see me for the joke. Yeah, I'm, yes, good. I'm, well done, innovating time. I'm very impressed. Thank you. You gotta love innovation. Okay, so where is Accessibility Oz? Accessibility Oz, hello, hello, come on. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Are we ready? One, two, three. Hello, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for Zero Project for having me here today. My name is Ricardo Garcia. I'm with Accessibility Oz, a company out of Australia and the US. We do web audits. So we uh, help organizations meet all their digital accessibility criteria. We have a fully accessible um, video player as well. We deliver training. So we do pretty much uh, like every other uh, this uh, accessibility organization does. Now, what I would like you to ask yourselves is uh, not what we can do for you or other accessibility companies can do for you, but actually what can accessibility do for your company and can actually do for the communities you cater to. After what we've heard from James, for example, digital is everything. Everything is moving to digital, digital transformations and so forth. So uh, accessibility is becoming even more and more important every day, right? So uh, it'd be great to talk with you, to discuss with you how uh, can we work together. I'm in booth number one here on this floor. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to uh, start a conversation and help you. Thank you. That was fast, eh? Yes, you got 30 seconds to spare. Yeah. You get some more food. Martin Magnificent, okay. over to you. Okay, the next one is from Kompetenzzentrum Selbstbestimmt Leben, Independent Living, Markus Winde from Germany. Okay. Well, what do we do for um, a world without barriers? Um, we distract um, three barriers. Um, number one is um, usually you have the independent living movement on one side and you have um, the policies, policy makers on the other side. And our projects, both of them um, work together and we build an alliance for fighting for social, um, for um, inclusion, for inclusion world. This is real political participation. Um, so number one is gone. Um, number two. In our six centers, 60% um, people with disabilities and 40% people without disabilities, disabilities working together. Um, this is really nothing about us without us. Number two, gone. Number three, unfortunately, um, in our um, um, society, we have still many barriers in our heads. Um, so, and we are living in a world with, our, with um, lots of discriminating opinions and actions. With our different campaigns, we raise the awareness for an inclusive society. Um, one of them you can see over there, it's an inclusive bike race, which we make every year. And if I say inclusive, I mean it really inclusive. So, so you have all different kinds of bikes there and all different kinds of people riding there. And in a double way of um, meaning, it's not um, somewhere at some point, so it's included in the UCA, uh, UCI Pro Tour races in Germany. The time is over. Um, even if we are German, we are nice people, so come to um, booth number 10 and talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next pitch will be an, a clean environment. <laughs> Can I just say, for those of you, English is not your first language. Well, well done. I'm now looking for Skeetle. Uh, where? Oh, hello, hello. You're very welcome. Here's the mic. And here's the one, two, three, go. Go. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here today. I'm Sam Campbell. I'm from Seitel. Oh, Seitel. Yeah, that's all right. But that's 
helping me use five seconds. <laughs> CITL is a company that provides electrical, electoral technology for supporting election inclusion and accessibility. Please stop by our booth on this level for a demo of the New South Wales iVote secure and accessible online voting system and learn how this online voting system supports persons with disabilities and remote users to vote independently, privately and securely in the Australian state of New South Wales. The system has received praise from disability groups in Australia and is well regarded by users, achieving a 97% positive satisfaction rate from voters. The system is used to allow eligible voters to vote electronically at state level elections. We can show you how the interface works and we can tell you a little bit about our experience deploying the system in 2015 preparations for the upcoming 2019 elections. I'd be delighted to show you the system and give you more details about our experience. Please stop by and say hi. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And I marked up on your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, over to you, Martin. So the next one is uh, Cevides Bus uh, with Roxana from Romania, and I can tell you they have a story to tell. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, no, we're fine with one. Yeah. Indeed, we have uh, several stories to tell, actually. Thank you so much for the intro and for having us here. Um, I'm Roxana. By my side, we have Ellie, and we're representing Cevades Bus Association. This is a self-advocacy movement from Romania that focuses on three main areas, accessibility, uh, deinstitutionalization, and rights protection. And um, I'm happy to share with you that uh, the association is this year one of the zero project awardees with and thanks to a very, very beautiful product, which is this book. It's a graphic novel depicting uh, some experiences of Ellie's stories uh, from her 25 years spent in state institutions. Uh, we are booth number 11. Uh, we have there uh, the author of the book, an amazing illustrator. We have Ellie, the protagonist of the book. Uh, visit us, browse the book, talk with us. We also have um, some flowers uh, made by a social enterprise and they are to honor, to honor the ones that passed away in state institutions, still 1,200 people died in average every year in the Romanian state institutions and we want to, to, to remember them. And we're actually fighting to create um, um, a deinstitutionalization service in our country. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, social skills animation. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Uh, hello to everybody. I'm Alexander Nikitovic. I'm coming from Serbia. Uh, I'm an occupational therapist and working with uh, people with autism. So we made one uh, application which allows the therapists and parents making animation and showing to a person with autism what to do and how to do. Because as we know, people with autism they are visual learners. Uh, it's very easy to, to make. You just need two minutes. It's fun. The people like likes it. The kids love it. So come to our booth. It's number five. We I will be glad to show you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Martin, over to you. Yes. So the last one of the first round is Nick from Wichita, and he came all the way up from South Africa. Okay, Nick, here we go. Doop. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here. Um, so um, I started a company called Wichita, which is a social enterprise um, designed or focused on uh, closing barriers of communication, enabling the deaf and others with disabilities to make decisions based on the correct information. Um, so Finger Talk itself is an app for uh, an educational app teaching sign language allowing you to play quizzes. It's also a deaf engagement platform, allowing you, uh, deaf users um, access to community information through its notice board. And then the spin-off from, from uh, Finger Talk is an app called We Sign It, which is um, 
basically a tool that uh, translates uh, corporate, or corporate written in, uh, communication into pre-recorded sign language. So um, that'll change the way that deaf people communicate and interact with, um, with organizations. Uh, we are booth number 12. Please come and see us. Uh, we have some live demos going as well. We're happy to take any of you through um, the stuff. Uh, which, uh, we signed it in Fingertalk, both very, very exciting apps. Fingertalk has been, um, has been adopted into three South African universities as well, into their, their, their curricula. And yeah, it's, it's becoming a, a, the official deaf uh, engagement platform in South Africa. I hope I have time left. You have about can, 10 seconds. Can I test you and see if you guys forcibly remove me? Uh, uh, you could do that, but I will. <laughs> no, I, won't. I, I will. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, can I just say, could we not give a bigger round of applause? That was phenomenal for every single person who did that. Really? Thank you, guys. That was really hard and that was really under pressure and I'm really sorry to be so horrible, but that's what I was told to do. But I also want to give a big round of applause to our signers over here who've had to do this at 90 miles an hour. Please, a congratulations. Very great. impressed. Thank you. Martin, you designed a great, great system. Now we're going to have a little break from speedy 90 second pitches and our second keynote uh, address is from Jochen Schaus. So will you please now welcome him to the stage. Where are you, Jochen? Hello, hello. Jochen gets more than 90 seconds, he gets 10 minutes. You are very, very, very welcome. Yeah, thank you very much um, for this uh, opportunity. Can okay. you hear me? Hello? No. Do you want me to stand here for a little while? Second try. You thank go. you. Okay. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to share some information about the work of the charitable foundation uh, My Handicap. Um, I've uh, brought some information about what we are doing, uh, about the history and where we stand today. As uh, this is about uh, political participation, I will talk about that, about independent living. And finally, I come to the main point uh, why I'm here, uh, how we can work together. We are in the uh, status of uh, further internationalization and I hope to find several partners in this room for bringing our services to uh, your country, hopefully. So the core of uh, uh, the service of my handicap is an online portal for persons with disabilities. Uh, this is uh, uh, mainly uh, to allow people uh, with disabilities to help themselves and we have a focus on peer-to-peer -peer information. We have uh, today over 100,000 answers of peers about uh, questions around disability. And this is all based on my personal experience. Uh, I had a, a motorbike accident 16 years ago, lost my arm, my leg, and as I have been an internet uh, entrepreneur, of course I uh, went on the internet uh, with uh, 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 all the questions that I had, and uh, at that time there was just nothing on the internet. I couldn't Google amputation processes and things like that, and so being an entrepreneur, I uh, thought that I have to fill this gap, and uh, that's what we did over time. So we started 15 years ago in my home country, Switzerland, added Germany, the much bigger market with 80 million people in the next year, we have a little English online presence, but we only have about 5% of the uh, German content on the English website. Um, in 2009, we have added the Research Center for Disability and Integration at the University St. Gallen with three different professorships who do research about mainly inclusion. Uh, in 2015, we have started a full French website, and uh, last year, uh, with a little bit of different kind of service, which is more or less uh, dialogue-oriented with a chatbot. We address mental health issues, because you all know mental health is uh, 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 probably the, the biggest uh, disability at the moment, and, and growing, unfortunately. And uh, from now on, we want to uh, go uh, f uh, more international, and we are looking for partners for this further internationalization. So. Um, 
where we operate, we are the most used source of information and communication for people with disability. We have uh, had uh, more than five million visitors uh, last year in uh, Germany. We have, uh, I said so, already over 100,000 answers uh, that were qualified as good by uh, those who asked the questions. We have more than 50,000 members in our community, more than 30,000 pages of content. Um, we have included into the first workforce uh, more than 1,000 uh, persons with disabilities over the last couple of years. There are more than 100 uh, volunteers uh, supporting us, and uh, together with the CDI, we have uh, more than 15 full-time equival equivalent uh, working for us. About political participation, we don't have a special focus on political participation, but as it is uh, very much driven by users, um, it happens on its own. So our pages and the forum on disability rights is one of the most used in uh, the platform. Um, our research center uh, does preparation uh, for lawmakers' decisions, and uh, where we operate, we are in touch with uh, the governments. On independent living, again, that's also not a focus per se, but uh, of course, as we uh, work a lot on uh, uh, an inclusive living as much as possible, uh, here uh, in the part of uh, our own content that uh, we have prepared, you see, for instance, uh, in uh, medical aids and uh, uh, mobility, um, care, uh, disability rights, uh, traveling, um, living, and so on. Uh, those are all uh, uh, headlines of areas where we have uh, uh, content and links for. And when you look at the forum, so this is the peer-to-peer -peer part, um, you see, uh, no surprise, uh, uh, comparable subjects where people are interested in, this is now in German again, medical aids, uh, building and living, um, uh, vacations, uh, traveling, mobility, uh, uh, auto mobility, and things like that. So, um, how can we work together? Well, we have uh, collected a lot of relevant content, and we would love to share it. Um, it's, it's quite easy. We, uh, translating today is not a big problem, so we can easily translate it into your language. We will need uh, some localization to, for instance, adapt to the local rights for people with disability in, in your countries, but we think that this can be done with maybe two uh, persons who would uh, uh, care for the website in your region. Um, we, we do help hundreds of thousands of people in the German-speaking region, but unfortunately, by now, only in the German and uh, French language. And uh, wouldn't it be great if we could uh, share this content uh, for all of the world? That's what uh, I'm personally committed uh, to do, and I want to have this service global in the next, whatever, 10 to 20 years. Besides that, what we definitely can already do um, is communicate your services that you are offering for persons with disability to the German and uh, French-speaking market, so you can uh, anytime come to me and uh, talk about that, and we will publish uh, uh, information that is interesting for this group. So, if you are interested either in using us uh, to communicate your services or uh, if you're interested that our service comes to your country, please talk to me. Looking forward to this. Our goal is a global self-help portal by and for persons with disability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joachim. Another great timekeeper. Thank you so Thank you. much. Okay. So, Martin, where are you? I'm great. Oh, here I'm you are. Okay. So, safe. we're back on. Okay. Now, can the second round do as good as our first round? So we're ready to go. I have the threes, you have the fours. Let's, let's go and for them. first from the side of the threes is the Austrian Disability Council. Where are we, Austrian Disability Council? Yep. Oh, come Can on. We? Hello. Walk this way. Okay, here you go. Are you ready? Thank you. One, two, three. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Emil Benisch from the Austrian Disability Council. Um, we are an umbrella uh, organization 
which means we represent 80 organizations in Austria. One of our working focus is on uh, inclusive planning processes. And I would like to ex give you two examples for uh, our work. One is to create, have um, working groups where we work together with the Austrian Railway uh, Association and create a next generation of accessible trains. If you go to Italy in the four years from Vienna to Venice, you can check if we have done a good job on this. Uh, our another uh, focus is a project called Unicate, where we work together with the University of Technical Science in Vienna and Unica Foundation. And uh, this picture shows one of these uh, situations where we come together, students of technical sciences and persons with disabilities. They create working teams and then create a new technology serving for one of them. Um, later on, you will find uh, you will uh, get to know some two guys who won this uh, Unicate Prize. Come to booth, booth 18 to get more information on this. Excellent. Well done. Martin, over to you. Okay, great. So let's move on with the group uh, four. So let's welcome Michael Holden from Ireland, and he's presenting the Mobile Loop. Here you go. Thank you. How are you, Michael? How's it going? One, two, three, go. Hello, my name is Michael from Mobilu in Ireland. We are at booth 24 downstairs. We operate a mobile high dependency unit for people that really have complex disabilities. Have you ever thought what it might be like to go to a concert or an outdoor event, a carnival, a fete, anything that is happening in the municipality and there are no toilet facilities? People with complex disabilities simply can't go because they can maybe last a couple of hours before they need to go back home to change. So we built this unit which has an electric ceiling hoist, um, an electric rise and recline adult changing bench, hot and cold running water, a toilet, and if you really are into camping at festivals, there is a shower inside as well. We have been using these across Ireland and the United Kingdom. And on our booth, we can't show you a real life Mobilu, but we can show you some brochures and also a video of all of the tens of hundreds of smiling faces of the lives we have been able to transform because people can go out, feel included, and be part of the fun just like everybody else. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That really sounds like fun. <laughs> Okay, from this side, for GL Projects. Hello, hello. Hi. Okay, here we go. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Paul Panek. Actually, I'm coming from Vienna University of Technology. GL Projects is a young company in Austria working also on the area of assistive toilets. And uh, as you see here on the picture, there are different versions. On the left side there is a lady on a chair-like toilet which driven by a motor can be lifted and so the standing up process can be improved and can be made much more easier. And another version which is offered are so-called lift WCs which are wall mounted and can support you with the standing up and sitting down process. So you may ask why I, coming from the university, are presenting this. The reason is that during a research project, we were in the position to use uh, these uh, standard toilets, motorized toilets, which already have proven to be very useful for persons with disability, and equip them with additionally ACD-based modules. For example, an RFID reader, which allows the system to adapt automatically to the very different needs of individual persons using the toilet, or speech recognition to change the toilet, or very important emergency recognition systems, which can automatically trigger um, emergency call in case of need. 
we are also working for the future as a university to discover. Thank you. No, 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 hold on. What booth are you at? To discover. No, no, the booth. The booth is the number 25, and we are cordially inviting you to visit our booth and uh, make hands on uh, trials of um, our product versions. Thank you, and I'm sorry I have to cut you off. Martin, over to you. Okay, next group is Hapticus. Where's Hapticus? Okay, come in. Oh, hurry up, hurry. 90, 89, 88. Hello. Yeah, my name is Amir, the founder of Hapticus. Uh, it's a pleasure being here tonight. So Hapticus is a Singapore-based technology company that is established uh, with a vision to make transportation more accessible and inclusive. Our digital platform is an ecosystem which is complete accessible transportation ecosystem that connects people with special mobility needs with accessible transportation options that are fit with the personalized profile and route for the execution of the ride. So currently, if I need a ride, I need to call several providers and try to book the ride. With our app, basically, I book directly from the different transport options that are available there, being commercialized, non-commercialized fleets, also taxis who are accessible, who are trained to serve people with, serve, with special uh, mobility needs, and I can book the ride. The fleet providers are also provided with the fleet management tools that make them more efficient and also provides them with a channel to interact directly with their customers. So overall, is a more efficient uh, ecosystem for management and operation of the whole marketplace, which makes it an ideal uh, tool for decision makers based on a ground visibility and data to enhance the service for this community. So the service is available in Singapore and is managing thousands of rides monthly. Uh, and come visit us at booth number 20 to see how it empowers independent living and inclusion. Thank you. Right Thank you back. so much. <laughs> Thank you. Martin, how do I always get to be the bad cop? You need to call it the next one. <laughs> um, okay, so from my side, we're looking for Fight the Stroke. Hello? Fight the Stroke, Francesca? Can, I, can anybody see Francesca? Because I definitely can't. Okay. So I think we simply go on and see if she comes. Okay, so would you, you do okay. your one and we'll find Francesca. Go for it. Okay, so next presenter is going to be uh, uh, Bischoff from Austria with Guide Me. Now, this doesn't mean you get two 90 seconds. You only get 90 seconds. Go. Okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am founder and CEO of Guide Me. Uh, my son is with me and we can introduce you uh, how Guide Me works. Guide Me is a new video assistance service. Uh, we're looking for partners who want to make a better service for their customers. Uh, with, the, with a push of a button on your smartphone, you can connect to a professional operator. The operator can see your profile if you are blind, uh, if you are deaf, or if you are older people and you need help in a building. Uh, he can operate you, he can guide you through the building only with your smartphone. He can see all his GPS location and he can transmit data, for example, your uh, travel route. So the operator have all information of you and he can guide you directly to their destination. Um, thanks to being here. You can look on my booth. Uh, we are 21 and I and my son will show you and you can test by your own. Please share your experience with us. Very happy to be your, your experience, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Francesca, are you out there somewhere from Fight the Stroke? Yeah, oh, here you are. Hiya. Thank you. <laughs> OK, here you go. Real One, change two, makers I know. break We're the rules. We're on it. We're yeah. on it like a car bonnet. Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Francesca Fedeli. I'm coming from Italy. I founded, together with my husband, a social enterprise called Fight the Stroke, initially advocating for young stroke survivors, but actually, in the years, we found solutions of rehabilitation using technology that could be useful for all the kids with the cerebral palsy. So please, I would say, do not come at booth 22, because I'm always year-round, so keep in touch with me, just uh, online, on the app, or everywhere on the social media. Thank you.
Woo, that was the shortest one. You get top marks. Okay. Okay, so from my side of the fence, we're looking for step here. Yeah, Shai? Step here? You roll on in. Okay. Do you want to come to the front? So we can catch you on camera. Okay. And here you go. Yeah. One. One second, one now. No, no. Oh, yeah. I need my microphone yes, on the hand. Okay. Then you can start. Okay, wait. One, you tell me. Ready? One, two, one, three. Two, go. go. Hi, my name is Leo Haviv, and I with the step here. This is a, a development of a system for orientation and guidance in the, our uh, communities, uh, spaces. And I would like to start that we believe that we should first understand the freedom of people with disabilities, their definition for that, and then we should understand what we should do to give them that freedom. So we developed a, de a system that can connect them to the spaces and give them the opportunities to be here, to be in the academic world, to work, and to use specifically what I'm gonna to speak today about the transportation. So we have a system that a person can stand and find the, the station, the bus station, the train station, and then he can connect directly with the bus driver. It's, I don't know how to tell you, but sometimes when I use the buses in Israel, it's an awkward situation because I never know if he's gonna miss me, if he's gonna have a nice day. So if we send him a picture, hi, John, this is Lior, I'm waiting for you at the station, I'm sure he will smile to me and help me with... And this is a way to change the approach for people with disabilities. Come to booth nine. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, the next one is uh, from Austria again, the Hilfsgemeinschaft der Blinden und Sehschwachen, and it's Christian presenting. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, I was giving you extra time. Okay, one, two, three, go. Thank you. So, uh, hello and welcome. My name is Christian Vogelauer. I'm from the Association in Support of the Blind and Visually Impaired in Austria. We are actually the largest advocacy for uh, blind and visually impaired people in Austria. Uh, we're an NGO, NPO, and we're supporting our members in their daily lives, in their struggle to get employed, and in their uh, mission and their uh, support of uh, technological, technological advancement. And we believe that technology shall and will improve our lives, but that we still have a long way to go to really accomplish this mission. So uh, in this vision, we're partnering with uh, startups, with other organizations, with universities to further the technological level we have and uh, to provide new and innovative solutions to our members and um, to the general public as well. So we believe that accessibility is a mission that everyone should be included in, not only our members, not only the persons here in the, in the room, but everyone on this planet should be included. So uh, if you want to join us on that mission, on that way, uh, if you want to get in contact with us, seek us out at booth number 27, follow us on our social media channels, or visit our website, and uh, enjoy the conference. And thank you again very much. Thank you. Perfect time. Thank you. We have another exhibitor from Austria, Oscar. Uh, from Oscar. He comes here. Hello. Thank you. Okay. One, two, three. Hello. The smartphone touchscreen is a challenge for visually impaired people and blind users. Braille keyboards can help to improve the control of smartphones. However, Braille keyboards need supporting surf surface, like a desk. Therefore, we developed OSCAR, a mobile Braille keyboard. OSCAR was developed with the help of the Unicarte idea competition we heard uh, in a session before. OSCAR arranges the keys of the Braille keyboard in a block instead of a row, like the Braille keyboard. 
The arrangement of the keys allows Oscar to be controlled without a supporting surface. Like the smartphone, Oscar can be operated uh, while standing or walking. Oscar is open source, consists of uh, uh, commercially available components and can be built by the users and improved by the users. Oscar is four times faster than text entry with a smartphone touchscreen, according to a study by the TU Wien. Come to my booth and try to push some, push some buttons. Perfect timing, thank you. Where is Lead Me? Here they are. Thank you. Um, Hello, everyone. My name is Tobias Holzinger, and I'm co-founder of the startup LeadMe. We have developed glasses that are capable of recognizing obstacles in front of blind people to avoid um, these obstacles and because there's a chance to be missed by a blind man stick. You're talking here about obstacles like trash cans, street signs, especially construction site signs, um, obstacles that are not standing directly on the ground or are very thin and have therefore an increased chance to be missed by a cane. How are we doing this? We have developed glasses um, with sensors in the front to recognize these obstacles and then make the user aware of them with haptic feedback in the cane, uh, in the temples, as you see on the um, visual the up there. And the consequence of this is that we can help blind people to get easier from A to B, to avoid injuries, to have more joy, more joy in their life, and to be better included in our society. If you're interested in our product, and if you want to know more about it, come to our booth, it's 26. Um, we brought two prototypes today, one I have here. Um, you can test them there, and I'm looking forward to meet you there. Thank you for listening. Be our lead me. Thank you. I'm coming down okay. to test those glasses. Um, the last from my side of the fence is Tippy Keyboard, also from Austria. Hello. Thanks. Okay. Hello. Go. Hello and good evening. My name is Matthias Drory and I'm the developer of the Tippy Keyboard, a keyboard for one hand. This event is all about living and working without any uh, barriers. But a part of this is communication and connecting, not only with people, but also with technology. And the Tippy keyboard is only designed and especially designed for one hand use, actually for your left and your right hand. So it's not all about barriers. I think it's uh, also about the use of the right tools. And with the Tippy keyboard, you have the tool to operate the whole computer with one hand. Not a little bit, not a part of it, all programs, all shortcuts, and uh, all the um, word processing programs you can imagine. Uh, I would like to show you more at my booth at number 17, and I would like to thank the Austrian Disability Council who invited me, and to see your project foundation who makes this possible. It's a great evening, I wish you. A great evening too, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Martin. Okay, and for the last speaker, I have a question. Is everybody blind in outer space? The speaker's wonderful from France. Okay, I'm going to just now press the button. Go. Good afternoon. My name is Wanda. I'm here with Rosaria at Boot 29, representing the project Inspiring Stars of the International Astronomical Union which is the largest body of astronomers. And we, um, we established this project to equalize participation in all the aspects that are natural of the scientific field, of course, using astronomy as a, as a case study, because it's International Astronomical Union, right? So um, in all the aspects means education from school to, to university, professional, professional uh, performance, um, uh, outreach activities in science centers and, and all that. But my ingenuity as a, as a blind astrophysicist and Rosaria's passion as an astrophysicist is not enough. We need your help. 
because we can be just uh, chasing away everyone by, by my ingenuity and, um, and, and too much passion. So we need your help. So please come to booth 29. And uh, we brought a whole universe in our suitcase. Come and try it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to come this way? I don't know. Oh, which way do you want to go? OK. You Left go or right? Yes. OK. OK, once again, smashing pretty much everyone. GL Projects, I'm so sorry for being the bad cop. But congratulations, everybody. Big round of applause, because that was monumentally done again. We are amazing. Well done, Martin. OK, well done. so you now too. what we're encouraging everybody to do is you have heard the breadth of creativity and innovation. Take the time over the next two or three days to go around the space, have a conversation. You've been invited to do so. Is there anything else you want to add before we go on to our last keynote speaker? Only one thing, really go there and talk to the people and try out all the things they've taken along. They have taken so much effort to make Zero Conference something to touch and feel and experience. And that is what it's, the ex exhibition is about. And a big thank you to Martin, who has designed and created a great exhibition space. I think you'll all agree. Fantastic. Thank you, thank Martin. You. OK, and we're just coming close to dinner. So the great news is you can go to the exhibition and join in the conversation with food. And you will be having food in about 11 minutes. So the very last, to close us off for the very first day here at the Zero Conference, I'd love to bring up onto the stage Caliano Canna. Um, for those of you who need to know, we're going to have audio description on a piece of film. The audio description channel is channel one. Um, and where are, here we go. Yeah, uh, come up here, you are so welcome. So I think it's the end of the evening. So let's give all the energy and love to you. Thank off you, you go. Thank you so much. So my name is Kalyani Khona, I'm from New Delhi, India. And I want to talk about how uh, at the age of 26, my life feels like it's unlimited days and years and you know, centuries. Uh, but is it, is life really uh, you know, unlimited? And that's when I wanted to study how many days do we actually have from the day we, we see the planet for the first time, which is 29,000 days, uh, if you were to live for 80 or 90 years? And how does the life of a typical uh, you know, American look like? Um, you know, first early years of school, college, semaphore, uh, you, you know, make your first coffee, you get married, you have kids, there's retirement, there's your first car, and there are these amazing, amazing series of milestone and monumental happiness that you keep getting year after year. And then, uh, you know, I wanted to just study when the most popular people have died. At what age have they kind of, you know, created the most amazing thing that they created before they left the planet. And then I started asking, how do everyone else spend their 29,000 years? Is when I started questioning, how do people with disability spend this? And in my quest, I came across a rat park study. How many of you know of a rat park experiment that had happened 40 years back? Anybody raise a f no? OK, good. So there, were, there is a rat cage with two bottles of water. One is the normal mineral water, and the other is the water with heroin, which is an addictive drug. And they just put the rats in the cage and see what water they want to have after they've tasted water with heroin for the first time. And not very surprisingly, all the rats go for the water uh, with the heroin. And then they get addicted. And of course, they leave, uh, they finish their lifespan and they die. Uh, but this um, you know, scientist, Bruce Alexander, 40 years back said, but there is a flaw in this. The only thing they have is two bottles of water. Maybe this is why they're drinking the heroin water and going to, to death. Um, they said, let's make a rat park. Let's put cheese balls and colored materials and tunnels for them to play for and stuff like that. And then let's put the two bottles. What evidently happens is most rats go for the mineral water and not the water with the heroin. Uh, they live longer, of course, they're more happier, and so on and so forth. Uh, what kind of uh, this study uh, was a breakthrough was that environment matters. Where you are, what you experience, all of it matters. 
and the human experiment of this is the Vietnam War. When the soldiers went for the war, they got addicted to heroin and people thought that when the army comes back, 95% of them are going to be drug addicts. But that didn't happen when they came back to their families, their girlfriends, their wives and their kids. Uh, they went back to their normal routine life. Um, this kind of study was criticized heavily because it has one very big flaw. Uh, the flaw is that the human cage, which had only two bottles and nothing else, was all the rats that are of the same genetics, same uh, you know gender, and same biotics. So, and the park had people with different genders, co-genders, different genetics. They had pups because they could obviously mate. Uh, they had opposite gender so that there was attraction and so on and so forth. Uh, so one thing that this study doesn't talk about, which I kind of analyzed in detail, was the power of human connection. Uh, which even then replicates to the human experiment, which is the Vietnam War. When they went back to their loved ones, they of course, uh, you know, went beyond their addiction. Um, so when you do the two examples that I gave of the 29,000 years, and how do people with disability uh, in India, at least the country I come from, which is plagued with inaccessible technology as well as infrastructure, how do they live in, in a place? Is it like the cage or the park? And I was very disheartened to know that it's the cage. It's just their journey from home to hospital. And if you're lucky, if you're a part of this 2-3% of the Indian population living with disability, you have a job. And that's when we decided to change things. And in 2016, we launched a platform called Inclov. It's called Inclusive Love. And I'll just actually show you the video one uh, to kind of tell you more about how this works. Can we have video one, please? Uh, with the volume. did was to make sure this is 100% accessible to every person with any kind of disability. We're still on our journey to that. Uh, we made this in different languages, across different platforms, and also what we made sure was people with and without disability can be a part of this, and we don't club, we don't do the same mistake we've been doing forever now. Uh, and that kind of mutated to meetup programs where you could also meet people around your locality. You could, the people who actually found their life partner or a friend through a social network work like this could go and host meetups for us. And I'd just like to show you video number two for uh, you know how these the a tech platform gen genuinely has led to a human connection. Can we have video number two, please? I thought that I would go out of the nightclub in the nightclub. This was my dream. So, it's complete today. It's a lot of music, music and dance. I thought that I would go out of the nightclub.
different and it is uh, the first time. It was completely I, different. I see the like, energy, yeah. what I found away. I haven't done so much my entire life. Same but here. I think it's great work, man. It's like really inspiring work. I've known Shankar for a long time now and what they've been able to achieve is excellent. And trust me, this is the first time I'm attending something of this sort and it's amazing. The experience is different and it is something that I can't really describe anymore. One of our users told us that he has not been allowed to uh, a club before in another city because of the fact that he was on the wheelchair and we really wanted to do something for not just him but people like him and we know that there are like millions and millions of people out there in the, in the country who are not going to their favorite bar, who are not going to their favorite cafe, who are not going to their favorite stadium or their favorite theatre because either it is inaccessible or the fact that uh, there is a social stigma around it and we really wanted to change this, uh, change the game when uh, when it comes to like going out for people with disabilities and really socializing and feeling equal, feeling like they can go out to a nightclub and find the one that they either date or marry or make their companion. I'll drink, I'll dance, I'll uh, enjoy. Time to time when social distances are happening, I get to meet other people and enjoy it. <laughs> I love his clothes. <laughs> I love his girl and Kalyani. So we have 50,000 people with 100 plus meetups in 30 different cities in India by now. And it's, we feel like we're only starting with uh, giving everyone an opportunity to date, to find a life partner, to go for their first coffee, and so on and so forth. Because the team at Inclub, and it's a very small team of eight people, uh, we believe that the step from living a isolation uh, isolating life and to having a more fulfilling life starts with a simple human connection and we uh, strive to do that because nobody deserves to be alone. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Colana. Okay, so we're all starving. So it's time for food. Uh, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody for being so on time. A really, really warm thanks to James and Jochen and Colano. Thank you for your keynote speeches. Thank you, Martin, for organizing the exhibition and pitches. And thank you, all of you, for the exhibition pitches on time. Thank you for our interpreters and signers over here. So, ladies and gentlemen, day one of the official proceedings of the Zero Conference is over. Tomorrow morning, be back in this room at 9.30 for the second film from Realabilities called Guest Room. So please go and enjoy the evening, reach out, have conversations, make friends. See you back here tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>